know that your thumbnail, the little the little icon that you're supposed to look at, you know, that you're supposed to put on YouTube to show what is going to be on the video. One, that the thumbnail should be a picture from the actual video. And two, that the words that you use on the video on the thumbnail should also be the first words spoken in the video. Welcome to Coffee with Bob. But this, since this is season four, I thought I would just back up a little bit. Because if you're new, and there are some new people here, new subscribers, lots of them actually, and to the old subscribers who have been here, thank you. Thank you for coming back and sticking with me and not checking me. But if you're new, stop. Don't don't hit back. Not yet. Don't don't click back. And this isn't going to be one of those oh da 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 like keep watching, keep watching, but nothing actually happens. Don't get me started about those fucking videos. Basically, Coffee with Bob is a kind of a podcast of just banter from a boat. Bob is a boat. So step one, Bob is a boat. So in all my other videos, Bob, 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 Bob is the boat. So this is, this is Bob. <laughs> Say hi, Bob. Oh boy. All right. So I was on the, talking to a friend the other day and she's like, so what are you going to do the new episode on? And I was like, season four, which means year four. Which means Bob and Dad and I have been together four years. I think it was in like October when we started year four, I think. I think so. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so we've been working on Bob for definitely for three years. And we get ahead. And then we have a couple of mishaps. And this year is no different. And it wasn't even... It wasn't even us. So I've had some people ask me a couple of questions about the whole ep the whole thing that happened with Bob. So remember when Murph, the big draft horse, stepped on my foot last fall? That put any plans that Dad and I had to go sailing, that just put the nixes on it because I could not walk. So we were in the boatyard. We got so much done. I was doing great. Then Murph stepped on my foot and I was not mobile. So dad and I decided to go to Ecuador. We flew to Ecuador and that's in the previous video. Okay. And while we were there, I get a call from the boat yard, from the marina and oh, not even a call because it was an email. I think I said some of this, but, but I'm going to show you all the, I took the band-aids off. So I get an email from the marina telling me, oh, by the way, your boat was damaged in a storm. Oh, okay. And then the photograph sort of showed some things. Then I got back and I came here and I talked to the, the guy that owns the marina. And he's like, well, you know, we had this high wind and the line snapped and... <sighs> so we're going to haul the boat out and do the repair but I don't even know if I need to haul the boat out like if if I was being particular I really don't think I could need to haul the boat out I feel like I could pull that chain plate off and I'm going to show you the video so you guys know what I'm talking about because I'm so I'm I'm miffed because Bob looked so good good and was doing so good and we've gotten so much done and for this to happen without us having anything to do with it we did not do it okay so I am going to show you that video actually let's do that right now I'm just going to be like boop here it comes Five, four, three, two, one. hold on here it is take a look at Bob's damage
So while you guys were looking at Bob's video, I ran and got my coffee cup. <laughs> I still have it and it's still covered with epoxy from the Boatyard Saga. Um, but anyway, my friend Karen, she actually had more made. I need to get them to the boat. They haven't made it to the boat yet, but coffee with Bob. I still love it, Karen. <laughs> anyway, okay, so you saw there it is, right? Uh, there are some of you that are on my channel who are experts. You guys are amazing. So please chime in. My plan, basically, I already loosened that stay where the chain plate is and where all the crack, the big long crack is. Um, I took the tension off that. I was able to tap it back into place. My thoughts were to, I'm going to epoxy it and then put a support, something underneath the ledge right there, rebuild the block that the chain plate curves around because that block is, is broken. So put in a new block and then reinforce the lip where the chain plate rests up against. I was thinking of putting in a piece of like G10 underneath the teak overhang. So that was kind of my thoughts. And then actually I talked to dad tonight who is still in Ecuador, by the way, and he sent me some video, but I haven't looked at it. So I will continue putting together some of the videos of Ecuador. In fact, um, one of the questions that I had from the last video, from the season three video, the finale, was from Karen when she was asking me about the Pasifino horses, right? Why do they... Do, 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 do. So actually, I'm going to put it right here. Basically, Karen, that's a specific breed, and that's how they trot. That's their little pace. And they're like... Do, 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 do. They go really quick footed like that. But the thing is, is that you can sit on them and you don't feel any bouncing, right? They feel like <laughs> they actually feel like they're on roller skates and they just, so I have other footage of them. So hold on just a second. And it's actually from carnival where they were going, thinking going down the road and you get an idea. They just, the rider just kind of sits there. The stirrup is longer and their leg is kind of out front and it's definitely different seat than what you see here in the United States. Um, but hold on because this is an example of Pasifino horses. Here it comes. <laughs> So we got to go down to Carnival and that is basically on that weekend of Carni Carnival, those horses came through and it was a hoot. It was such a good time. Um, Ecuador is, they're just so friendly and they love their fiestas and I think I said that in my last video, but any opportunity to have a little um, party. So 
that is the Pasifino horses. So that answers the question about the horses. Hmm. Okay. And then somebody else asked a question that was like, so, uh, what, what did we name the dinghy? We didn't. We didn't. We did not yet name the dinghy. Right now, he's sort of floating half, like, three quarters of the way full of water because it rained. And, oh, anyway, we haven't named the dinghy yet because when I hurt my foot, then we went to Ecuador and it kind of just fell off the wagon about naming the, <laughs> naming the dinghy. Uh, so hold on. Cause I have some video of the dinghy too. Hold that thought. He's underwater. Maybe he should just be underwater. That's probably not a good thing to name the dinghy. But anyway, send me some ideas for the dinghy name. All right, so uh, and then I have to think about how and what to tell you about season four. Basically, we have decided to um, have an estate sale and move and move to Deltaville, preferably try to move on to the boat. So essentially, we were going to be moving from an 8,000 square foot house to... 40 foot boat. Um, that's kind of a big project. So we contacted a, a man who has a access to the containers and does all this household goods transportation. And here we are packing up, you know, dad stuff and mom stuff and getting it ready to go in the container that was supposed to be there on April 29th. I'm sorry, on March 29th. Anybody know what happened in and around March 29th that might have, I don't know, delayed a container ship? Yep. Our container, apparently you get assigned a container. I did not know this. So you get assigned a container and then it comes and then you fill it up and then it leaves. You get your container. Well, our container is coming from Baltimore. Yep, our empty container. So uh, <clears throat> the, day, the day before the container is supposed to be there, I get an email that's like, so uh, you, your container is uh, stuck <laughs> on the other side of the now fallen Bridge. I know the Key Bridge really well. I used to go up there. I used to live in Baltimore. It was very uh, depressing, but I want to go up there and look at it as like, so I might go for a drive, take y'all over to Fort Armstead and, and Fort McHenry. There's just some things to see up there. Maybe go look at the Key Bridge. God, it's so sad. Holy shit. And I've been watching different YouTube channels about what happened. Um, some of the hypotheses I know, uh, there's a, there's kind of a, a hush order right now. There's not a whole lot of people are talking. Um, I have now heard that the pilot that was on board actually called the Pilots Association. And the Pilot Association reached out to all the emergency um agencies to shut down the bridge to stop the traffic to get like to get everything um to minimize the damage when they realized that they lost uh power there are still a lot of different hypotheses i'm not gonna prescribe to the conspiracy thingery mongering right now like oh it was this it was that there is a there is something that's been going on in the shipping industry where they have residual plastic in the diesel fuel, and that has been causing vessels to lose power. Um, and they have uh, different types of switches where you switch to um, different types of diesel for for 
like local local handling and then off when they get out it's a different kind of diesel which i think is a little bit more efficient for long term or long distance trips and as they started to leave the channel it's my understanding that they tried to switch over and then blah that didn't work well the if there was plastic like melted plastic in the fuel then when they did the switch and it didn't work because the system is a lot more sensitive it needs the higher efficiency fuel so i think it's thinner fuel and i think if there is plastic in it maybe that's what happened i don't know there's a whole lot of hypothesis but right now i am not going to prescribe to i'm just not going to blame donald trump for it yet no, okay, I'm being sarcastic. Uh, I do have one other question that comes up frequently, and that one is, where are you, Nicole, on the scale of political, the, the political realm? Where am I? I am in the part, the what the fuck party. Sorry, WTF, what the fuck? Because... Any reasonable person, any reasonable person who is not wearing blinders can see that neither one of these, none of the people who are currently in office or running for office should be in office or running for office. Okay, poor Joe Biden, I'm pretty sure it's elder abuse what he's doing, whoever's leading him around, he cannot put two sentences together. He just can't. I mean, the man is, I, and I'm not going to be like, oh, he's fine. Uh, no, he's not. And if that's how you speak in job interviews, I can assure you, you would not get the job. All right. Okay. So then Democrats, if they hear me say that, then they're like, oh my God, you're, you're a Trumper. And I'm like, well, hold on. Just because I don't like Donald or Joe Biden does not mean that I'm pro Donald Trump, Mr. Nee, 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 nee. Okay. All it means is I'm willing to call bullshit bullshit, and then I'm willing to call bullshit bullshit. Like, who would have thought Donald Trump would ever be president? Okay. When he ran, when, when he initially announced his candidacy, I thought it was hilarious. Like, are you kidding me? And then he won, like, oh my God. And then he was in office. Okay, and then he said ridiculous things that made people crazy, like, let's inject people with bleach. I think he was brainstorming. I'm pretty sure he was just brainstorming out loud, like, can we disinfect blood? Okay, and amongst all the other things that he did. But I have one question. And, it, and it's simple as just, why... Did they just not let Donald Trump fade away into the ex-president land where Obama lives and where George Bush lives and where, who, who was that one guy? The Monica Lewinsky guy? Clinton, Bill Clinton. All of these ex-presidents live in this realm where nobody talks about them. They become so irre irrelevant the minute they leave office. But no. For some reason, we have had to have used federal resources to indict Trump on just about everything they possibly could, which, okay, that's fine, but all they've done is keep his name in the news, okay, and keep him relevant. I'm sure some of you have heard the whole, there's no such thing as bad press. Even bad press is still good press. Because, let's face it, he is undeniably everywhere. Everywhere. The man, you cannot not look at TV and not see Donald Trump. He's everywhere. So my question is, why did the Democratic Party and MSNBC, because we know, like, let's not pretend like MSNBC is not run by the Democratic Party. Okay, that's their narrative. That's their distribution, information distribution system. And we also can't deny, okay, that the counterpart is Fox News for the Republican Party. 
Fox News, which is technically just an entertainment company. So if you ask me what side of the aisle I'm in, I'm in the back of the room being like, what the fuck? This country cannot come up with anything else. And no, they can't because it's run by these two parties who insist that one of the one of one of the other is going to control the president or the presidential candidates. And there are other parties and other candidates, but they because because the two party system, Fox News and MSNBC, they control the dissemination of information. So it's always going to be one or the other. So if you ask me what side of the aisle I'm on, I know. Okay, I know that you don't know. And then I just go, oh, oh boy. Wake up, boys and girls. The Republican and the Democrats are all wings of the same bird. Ding the name, the dingy. But anyway, send me some ideas for the dingy name. All right. So, uh, and then I have to think about how and what to tell you about season four. Basically, we have decided to um, have an estate sale and move and move to Deltaville, preferably try to move on to the boat. So essentially, we were going to be moving from an 8,000 square foot house to 40 foot boat. Um, that's kind of a big project. So we called, I reached out to a company and my dad wants, you know, we all, obviously we're going to move some stuff to Ecuador. So we con we contacted a container. We, we contacted a, a man who has a access to the containers and does all this household goods transportation. And here we are packing up, you know, dad stuff and mom stuff and getting it ready to go in the container that was supposed to be there on April 29th. I'm sorry, on March 29th. Anybody know what happened in and around March 29th that might have, I don't know, delayed a container ship? Yep. Our container, apparently you get assigned a container. I did not know this. So you get assigned a container and then it comes and then you fill it up and then it leaves. You get your container. Well, our container is coming from Baltimore. Yep. Our empty container. So uh, <clears throat> the, day, the day before the container is supposed to be there, I get an email that's like, so uh, you, your container is uh, stuck <laughs> on the other side of the now fallen Key Bridge. I know the Key Bridge really well. I used to go up there. I used to live in Baltimore. It was very uh, depressing, but I want to go up there and look at it as like, so I might go for a drive, take y'all over to Fort Armstead and, and Fort McHenry. There's just some things to see up there. Maybe go look at the Key Bridge. God, it's so sad. Holy shit. And I've been watching different YouTube channels about what happened. Um, some of the hypotheses I know uh, there's a, there's kind of a, a hush order right now. There's not a whole lot of people are talking um, I have now heard that the pilot that was on board actually called the Pilots Association and the Pilot Association reached out to all the emergency um, agencies to shut down the bridge to stop the traffic to get like to get everything um, to minimize the damage when they realized that they lost uh, power. There are still a lot of different hypothesis. I'm not going to prescribe to the conspiracy fingery mongering right now. Like, oh, it was this, it was that. There is a, there is something that's been going on in the shipping industry where they have residual plastic in the diesel fuel, and that has been causing vessels to lose power. Um, 
and they have uh, different types of switches where you switch to um, different types of diesel for for like local local handling and then off when they get out it's a different kind of diesel which I think is a little bit more efficient for long term or long distance trips and as they started to leave the channel it's my understanding that they tried to switch over and then blah that didn't work well the if there was plastic like melted plastic in the fuel then when they did the switch and it didn't work because the system is a lot more sensitive it needs the higher efficiency fuel so I think it's thinner fuel and I think if there is plastic in it maybe that's what happened I don't know there's a whole lot of hypothesis but right now I am not going to prescribe to I'm just not going to blame Donald Trump for it yet no okay I'm being sarcastic uh I do have one other question that comes up frequently and that one is where are you Nicole on the scale of political the, the political realm where am I I am in the part, the what the fuck party. Sorry, WTF, what the fuck? Because any reasonable person, any reasonable person who is not wearing blinders can see that neither one of these, none of the people who are currently in office or running for office should be in office or running for office. Okay, poor Joe Biden, I'm pretty sure it's elder abuse what he's doing, whoever's leading him around, he cannot put two sentences together. He just can't. I mean, the man is, I, and I'm not going to be like, oh, he's fine. Uh, no, he's not. And if that's how you speak in job interviews, I can assure you, you would not get the job. All right. Okay. So then Democrats, if they hear me say that, then they're like, oh my God you're, you're a Trumper. I'm like, well, hold on. Just because I don't like Donald or Joe Biden does not mean that I'm pro Donald Trump, Mr. Me, 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 me. Okay. All it means is I'm willing to call bullshit, bullshit. And then I'm willing to call bullshit, bullshit. Like who would have thought Donald Trump would ever be president? Okay. When he ran, when, when he initially announced his candidacy I thought it was hilarious like are you kidding me and then he won like oh my god and then he was in office okay and then he said ridiculous things that made people crazy like let's inject people with bleach I think he was brainstorming I'm pretty sure he was just brainstorming out loud like can we disinfect blood <sighs> okay and amongst all the other things that he did but I have one question and it, and it's simple as just why did they just not let Donald Trump fade away into the ex-president land where Obama lives and where George Bush lives and where who, who was that one guy the Monica Lewinsky guy Clinton Bill Clinton all of these ex-presidents live in this realm where nobody talks about them they become so irre irrelevant the minute they leave office. But no, for some reason, we have had to have used federal resources to indict Trump on just about everything they possibly could, which, okay, that's fine. But all they've done is keep his name in the news, okay, and keep him relevant. I'm sure some of you have heard the whole there's no such thing as bad press. Even bad press is still good press because let's face it. He is undeniably everywhere, everywhere. The man, you cannot not look at TV and not see Donald Trump. He's everywhere. So my question is why did the Democratic Party and MSNBC, because we know, like, let's not pretend like MSNBC is not run by the Democratic Party. Okay, that's their narrative. That's their distribution, information distribution system. 
And we also can't deny, okay, that the counterpart is Fox News for the Republican Party. Fox News, which is technically just an entertainment company. So if you ask me what side of the aisle I'm in, I'm in the back of the room being like, what the fuck? This country cannot come up with anything else? And no, they can't because it's run by these two parties who insist that one of the one of one of the other is going to control the president or the presidential candidates. And there are other parties and other candidates, but they because because the two party system, Fox News and MSNBC, they control the dissemination of information. So it's always going to be one or the other. So if you ask me what side of the aisle I'm on, I know. Okay, I know that you don't know. And then I just go, oh, oh boy. Wake up, boys and girls. The Republican and the Democrats are all wings of the same bird. Okay. So there you go. If you want to ask more questions about that, fine. You want to delve more into it, I can. Which reminds me, I recently got on YouTube, it allows you to create um, like a community tab where you can do like behind the scenes video footage and it costs like $4.99 a month to sign on there. And then I can get into all kinds of different um, conversations about this stuff. Okay. So if y'all, if there's anybody on my channel who wants to continue having this conversation, let me know. We can do it behind the scenes. I get, oh, another question I got. Am I a Swifty? Taylor Swift. Uh, I like some of her music. Uh, I'm not so sure I'm by the albums and comb through them. Okay. But she's undeniably as popular, if not more popular than Donald Trump. Ironic, too, because she's a Democrat. Uh, I do think that she is also everywhere. I do really like her music, and I enjoy uh, I enjoy dancing and singing her songs. But I am not so hung up on her personal life that I'm going to fly around in a helicopter and take pictures of her having a romantic weekend with her man. Like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Like, I have an appalling lack of curiosity about what other people do in their private time. It's private with their private bits. Like, I don't want to know what you do in your private time with your private bits in pieces. Not none of my business. I don't care. So I will say that I am a fan of football and I have watched the New Heights podcast since it started and the the Kelsey brothers seem like really cool guys and um Jason is a really cool guy and Jason's wife is adorable Kylie so I can't imagine that maybe it's just a nice little fit and it's probably he's just a really nice guy and she's having a ball and it's none of my business so I'm not going to click on the articles and I'm not that kind of a Swifty. I like some of the music. That's about it. I mean, we have so many other problems in the country. And the first thing you're going to see in my on my feet anyway. Poor Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey at the Bahamas. Uh, that's... That's pretty much all that I have um, for this week. I think I am, again, I'm, I'm behind and I have people handing me for videos. Didn't drink my coffee. Didn't drink my coffee. Uh, I do have a plan to start, like I said, I do have a plan to start fixing Bob. So when I get it, my plan was to video all of that. 
the container arriving, the whole process of what it was like to fill the container, sending it to Ecuador, and then moving out of the big house onto the boat, putting the house up for sale, homing the horses. Some of the horses need to be rehomed and now it's time to move on to the boat. And a fucking container ship knocked out the key bridge and after all this time, we are on season four, we're finally ready to make the move. Really? Really? So I do need a backup plan for the, the, the stuff. I guess our personal property could go into a storage unit until ships start running to Ecuador again or from Baltimore. I don't even know. Like, can they just reassign us a container? How does, how does this work? I don't know. I still haven't heard. It's been, it's been a couple of days now and I haven't heard anything new except we're waiting to hear what they're going to do, which I just, frankly, I don't think, I mean, they've got to get salvage companies to come in there, but they need a big one. Um, I mean, I've been keeping up with all of this Who's, who's responsible, what happened, and right now it's very hush-hush. Um, so that's all. Uh, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Because there's other things I want to say, but I might just put a video that's more detailed in the community section and get into some of the other stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But for now, that's it. I've had three sips of my coffee. Stay tuned uh, for episode, season four for the move and the adventures and the saga. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks for chiming in. All right. Take care. Have a good night, y'all.